Hi, my name is Bogdan Litescu and I run DNN Sharp. We've been around since 2009 and since then we've brought a lot of great modules to the DNN community, such as Action Form, My Tokens or Search Boost. And we noticed that a lot of people use our products to build web applications, more specifically applications that automate business processes. And this brings me to the subject today, which is our newest product, the Application Builder, which is basically a module that orchestrates all our other modules that we've been developing so far to produce these business applications. And I'm not going to talk about it. Instead, I will show it to you. I start by showing something that might look familiar to you and you probably did it a dozen times before. It's a customer management page. So naturally, there's a form to add customers and then agree to view all the customers and also a detailed page behind it. But all of this was generating using the new application builder. Let me show you how it was done. And I will start by showing you the database model for the application. Using this visual tool, I can create entities, which in fact are real database tables with index key, foreign keys and everything. Let me show you how we define the customer entity. The entity has a name and an icon and either is displaying in menu or not. And then we get to define the properties. There will be some built-in ones and then I can define as many properties as I want. Note how we don't use database types, we use more specific types like email. So then we know exactly how to generate the form and grids so they have the right validation and formatting. And also notice the last property, which is a list of orders, where order is another entity. So if we look at the types, we have the primitive types and then we can reference other entities either a single entity or a list of entities. And in fact, this is how we create relationships between tables. And the pages that you show at the beginning is not everything that was generated. The application builder also generated APIs, and you might recognize this module as our API endpoint module, where I can interact with the application from a mobile or an external system. So let's look at the API to create a new customer. And what I want to show you in fact is how the data is inserted into the database. There is no SQL. So part of our entity builder feature is that you are no longer required to know SQL to create the boilerplate of the application. And not only you are not required, but in fact, you don't even have to be a super user to do that. In fact, we created a new role that is called Citizen Developer, which can configure all of this stuff. And you think, if the user doesn't have access to the persona bar, how does it get to customize all of this? Well, we added this gear icon here, so even if people don't have super user or admin rights, they can still customize the form that was automatically generated for inserting and also the grids and the detail page and so on. The idea is to create everything fast and customize incrementally. Having defined the data layer of the application, the next step would be to create the business logic. Previously, you'd achieve that by implementing the action list directly in the module for example, on a submit button in Action 4. The application builder comes with a better way to do it. It's called Workflow, and it's a visual tool to draw processes based on a popular standard called BPMN. So you'll notice here that I have actions, and if I go to configure them, you are probably familiar with this UI. It's the same setting that you'd have in Action Form or any other action-based module. And also look at this node, which is called Exclusive Gateway in BPMN, which is basically a fancy way to say that the process bifurcates at that point. You have conditions based on which it splits, and then different actions that execute on each branch. We can also extend this process with new actions at any point, 
let's say that I will uh, call a different server to notify him on the change. And here I get to define again the settings of the server request actions with, which you might be familiar with. And then I can wire it in the process wherever I want. So notice how my process extended to include the new action. A process also has input parameters. So we can add a parameter let's call cc and make it of type email. So then I can reference this input parameter as tokens in cc fields of all email actions. So I will save this process and I will also show you how you get to invoke it. Let's say from the API that creates a new customer. So I can go into the API, edit it, and in the list of actions, I can execute any workflow that I have defined in my application. And with the inputs and outputs, the workflow is basically isolated from the context from where it's called. So any parameters that you might have in a form or in an API needs to be explicitly passed into the workflow. And this makes workflow much more robust. There are many other features in the application builder product, such as the mobile application that is currently in alpha, but which basically will allow accessing the data from a mobile application. And then we have a GitHub integration where all the changes done to any module from this portal will be exported and committed to a GitHub repository and other features which I invite you to explore by trying the product. Thanks for watching this and looking forward to having your feedback.